Dear friend, my name is Prince Michael of Nigeria and I am reaching out to you with an exciting opportunity. I am in possession of a large sum of money and I want to give you $50 if you help me. Dear friend, Hey guys, how's it going? Over the past week, I developed malware which uses Discord for both command and control. Why? Because I wanted to. And to demonstrate that hackers are only limited by their own creativity. Let's get into it. Okay, so let me give you guys a quick demonstration. I wrote the program in Go, and I have the source files here on my Linux host OS. Uh, I have a compiled binary for Windows, and I have a compiled binary for Linux. Here I have my Windows VM, I have the compiled binary, and I have Wireshark listening so we can see the traffic afterwards. I'm going to go ahead and run both of the clients, and we should start to see Discord notifications pop up. And the way this program works is each time that a client is run, a new session is created, which is just a channel in this Discord server. This is from a previous test, so I'll go ahead and delete that. But we have these two sessions open. We have the one that I ran on Linux, and we have the one that's running in my VM on Windows. So we can run arbitrary commands with the man running emoji, and then the command we want to run. So let's say system info on Windows, and we have the output for that. And yeah, the same thing we can do on Linux. So let's say the id command, and we have the results for that. The program is multi-threaded, so we can do things like if we have a longer running command, like uh, sleep 10 and then id, we can start that and then run a second command. And the results come back and they're returned to us from the program as soon as they're ready. So it replied to the specific message so we know which one it's uh, targeting. And once the commands are ready, these turn into check marks. Apart from running commands, we can take screenshots. We do that with the camera with flash emoji. What it does is it takes a screenshot for each monitor that is available. So in this case, my Linux has two available. And on Windows VM, I'll only have the one. That's what it does. It takes screenshots. Apart from taking screenshots, we can upload and download files. Of course, this is all through Discord, and I don't have Nitro, so there's a limit of 8 megabytes. Discord, I believe, scans files for malware. Like, you probably can't send WinPs through Discord. Limitations, right? But let's say we want to download a file, so we use the uh, point down emoji, and then the path of the file we want to download. So, C users bill desktop secrets.txt, I believe. And here we go, we have the file was downloaded and it prints it out here for us. Yeah, and of course it still works on Linux, the exact same. The paths are just different. If we want to upload a file, we use the point up emoji. We type the path of where we want the file to go. So proof.txt, and then we upload the file through Discord, uh, 1.png. So we'll do two, uh, proof.png. We'll upload it, and we can check that it was actually uploaded uh, by listing out the contents of temp to see if it's there. It is there. The same thing works on Windows, of course. And apart from that, when you're done with everything, you send the skull emoji. The bot will see this, put a check mark, and stop the session. So you can see the client's no longer running here. Uh, we can go ahead and kill this session as well. Now the bot is offline because there are no more sessions open. I forgot to use Wireshark. 
Town. Okay, so I forgot to run Wireshark during the demonstration, but I wanted to show you what the traffic looks like. So I reran the client, ran a couple of commands, and uh, this is what it looks like. So since the malware is, or it is a Discord bot, that's all it is. So all traffic which is sent to Discord is of course encrypted with SSL, and that's the only traffic there is. So it just looks like regular Discord traffic. Uh, we have a DNS query to Discord, and then application data, application data, application data. That's it, just application data. Uh, the Discord bot works with web sockets. It's all encrypted. It doesn't necessarily look like a C2 if it's not what you were expecting, right? Okay, so let me show you guys the code. As I said, this is a program I wrote in the Go language. Big shout out to K Bibani for the screenshot library and BW Marin for the Discord Go library. These made it so easy to develop. And let's get into it. So, as I've said, this is it's just a Discord bot. We create a new session with the bot token. Obviously, this token isn't valid anymore. But anyways, we create a new bot session and we register a handler for the create message event. We create a new channel. So as you saw in the demonstration, each time the client is run, a new session is created, which creates a new channel for that session. And here we're generating the session ID and we're creating the channel in my server. We send the first message with the basic information. So host name, current name, current working directory, operating system, IP address. And then we go ahead and pin that message. And yeah, the bot is now ready for commands. It's waiting for the interrupt signal, so if you hit Control c you can kill the bot. This is mostly for testing. And we can go ahead and look at the handler function, which is actually handling these message create events. So the first thing we do is check if the message that it receives is in the correct channel. So each channel is a session. We don't want the bot to react to messages in a different channel than the one this current session is in, right? So we're checking is in the right channel and is it not a message from the bot? So we don't want to react to our own messages. Uh, we react with the clock emoji to indicate that we're processing the command and then we get into looking at if it actually is a command or not. So if it starts with the man running emoji, we know we're going to be running a command. If it's a camera emoji, we're taking screenshots, point down, we're downloading file, uh, point up, we're uploading file and skull. We're going to be closing the session and exiting the bot. When we're running a command, if we're on Windows, we're going to be using cmd.exe. And if we're not on Windows, we'll be using bin bash. We get the combined output of std out and std air, and we save that in the variable out. We're checking if out is longer than around 2000 characters because well, if you don't have Discord Nitro, there's a limit on messages to 2,000 characters. If you have Nitro, I think it's 8,000. I'm not 100% sure though. But anyways, if it's under 2,000 characters, we can go ahead and just use the code block for the output of the command. If it's over 2,000 characters, we have to create a temporary file and upload that to Discord. But either way, the output of the command should get sent to us, so it doesn't really matter which way it goes. For screenshots, we're using the screenshot library that I pointed out above. It checks the number of active displays, captures screenshots for each display, saves it as a temporary file, and sends it through Discord. For downloading a file, we have the point down emoji. With Discord, there is of course the limit of eight megabytes, or at least if you're not Nitro. So we check if the file is under eight megabytes in size, because if it's over, we can't download it, obviously. Uh, if it's under eight megabytes, we go ahead and upload it to Discord. And then we from the server can download it. Uh, for point up, this is when we're uploading files. It can't be bigger than 8 megabytes again, but this will be checked when we're trying to upload it, so we don't need to check it here, obviously. Uh, it just checks if the message has an attached file. And if it does, it goes ahead and downloads this from Discord server, and then copies it into the output file that we have specified in the path. If we get the skull emoji, we're going to go ahead and close the session and exit out of the bot. That's it. It's a pretty short program. It's only 200 lines long. That's it. It's just a Discord bot. So guys, thank you for watching the video. All the code from this project can be found on my GitHub, and you can find the link to that down in the description below. 
Apart from that, I want you to like the video, and I want you to subscribe, and I want to see you in the next one that I upload. Alright.